Right. Good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for making it to today's uh, webinar series. Uh, as you know, DQ Labs has launched the webinar series called... I'm sorry about that. Let me... Yeah. So uh, DQ Labs has uh, initiated the webinar series called E-Meet Your School. Uh, E-Meet Your Architecture School. And the reason we're doing this is we want you to know what school you're getting into. Every school has a brilliant, uh, has something good to provide. And, and it's up to you to choose, you to see what you sink in, sink with. And we're very, very happy today to introduce uh, Professor Mur Murlidhar Reddy. He heads the School of Architecture at CMR University, the Department of Architecture. So, so fantastic. We're very, very happy to have you here today. Good evening and Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar, sir. Um, right, so so just, just to get everybody on board with what's gonna be happening, uh, we will be, we will be, um, just hold on one second. Let me at least show my PowerPoint slide. Right. So, so today, what's going to be happening is that uh, uh, Professor Murlidhar would be definitely talking about his school, and the idea is for you to understand what is what is beautiful, what is different about his school, and why you should consider the school for your professional development. All right. Why you should be spending the next five years at uh, at CMR University School of Architecture. So in between, we are gonna show you five questions which are relevant to the NATA 2020 new pattern. That is the design sketching new pattern, all right? So look out for these five questions during the, uh, the webinar and we'll take it from there. So Professor Reddy, thank you so much for coming in. Over to you. I'm going to stop my screen share now. And uh, and yes, over to you. Give me just a second. Yeah, so, uh, I'm not able to share. Yeah, a couple of minutes. I'm not able to not share able. my screen. All right, all right. Let me check. Yeah, technically, yeah. Your, can you try now? Yeah, now I can uh, see the thing. I was not able to see the thing. Okay. Just give me a minute. All right. Sure. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes, I can see the presentation. Uh, good evening. Very good evening, everyone. I uh, I thank, first of all, uh, uh, Dion and uh, DQ Labs for uh, giving this opportunity to talk about our school. Uh, how I would like to go about uh, our school, we are, uh, since we are a very young school, uh, this uh, presentation is basically going to be a journey of how we've uh, uh, gone till now, what is the learnings, what has happened, and uh, along the way, how we've uh, come across. So, and as uh, Dion already mentioned, in between, uh, we would uh, put across some of the questions you will be uh, waiting for, which are part of the new uh, NATA uh, entrance. So uh, just to uh, start off, uh, our school is called the CMR University School of Architecture. Now, what does uh, that mean is uh, something would, I would like to uh, uh, explain a little bit. Uh, our uh, school is a university school, which uh, belongs to the CMR University. Now, CMR University was uh, established in the year 2013 uh, 
by the Karnataka uh, state called the CMR University Act of 2013. Now, the group itself is, uh, uh, we just celebrated our uh, Silver Jubilee uh, last year. So the group itself is 25 years old and our university itself is about eight years, uh, eight years old. And uh, from uh, our uh, architecture school, the uh, first batch have just finished their uh, uh, thesis. So we've uh, successfully uh, concluded our uh, thesis of the first batch. Uh, during the pandemic, we have uh, continuously uh, done the uh, uh, sessions and we have uh, successfully completed it. And uh, the, that's the, that's a big uh, uh, news for us that yes, we have uh, taken this uh, five year journey. So before I start talking about uh, why uh, uh, CMR, uh, your first question is going to come now and I hand it over to uh, uh, Dion for uh, taking it up further. All right, all right. So thank you, thank you, Professor. Um, we just look out for the question. Yeah. And and uh, Meghna, you can take over from here. Good evening, guys. Uh, yeah, so here's your first question for today. I'll read out the first question. Uh, if the following pattern is drawn on a white piece of paper and a chrome cylinder indicated by the circle is placed in front of it, what reflection will be visible on the cylinder surface? So your time starts now. You get 30 seconds to leave your answers in the live chat. Okay, so the answer is option A. Okay, so this is a process called as anamorphosis. Okay, if you want, you can note it down and maybe Google it and read about it more. So it's about uh, the image. It's It speaks basically about the view that, you know, reflects on a particular object. So there is there are a lot of painting and things like this happen. So it's an entire detailed study that you can do. I'll uh, repeat the term, it's anamorphosis, okay? So if you need a detailed explanation more about it, just wait till the end of the session, we can have a discussion, okay? Yes, sir, over to you. So can I proceed? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, most important uh, question, as in, uh, why should you... Uh, uh, join the CMRU School of Architecture. Now, uh, this is, uh, this again, this why is something where uh, in the uh, uh, school we make it in a habit uh, for the students that you should keep asking uh, uh, this question when you are uh, attempting a design or looking at uh, something, doing a detail or uh, any of these things. So, now, uh, this is the uh, vision what we've uh, put together for the school. And uh, if you see, uh, there are certain uh, words which have been highlighted. Now, one is uh, maker-centered and uh, one other one we've, uh, I've uh, highlighted is uh, social. And then we're talking about uh, uh, ecological and then we're also mentioning about global citizens. Now, uh, in the end, we have mentioned contemporary built environment. That is because we are talking about an architecture school. Now, uh, these are some things which uh, right from the beginning, when we set out to uh, do the school, it was a clear mandate as to how the school is going to be uh, uh, standing out or setting out on a different uh, path uh, compared to what is existing. So, and since we are a uh, private university, there are a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, responsibilities which automatically fall on our shoulders so this is how uh, we have gone about it and it now in today's uh, uh, time and date as a school uh, we are uh, biased towards uh, sustainability now that is uh, the word sustainability is something which is uh, overly used uh, or uh, abused or uh, uh, it's uh, taken out of context so many times but it's equally important to keep using that word so where we are uh, talking about is we have uh, uh, set up certain uh, benchmarks to look up to and uh, we always stress on the point of uh, when you say sustainable it has to address many angles to it but we also keep talking about that uh, students should start thinking like ecologists okay and then we are talking about uh, being global citizens and being humane at the same time so uh, now uh, again to an continue answering the question why uh, as uh, i already mentioned we are part of a, we are a university school that means we are the only architecture school in the cmr university now we uh, consciously we are following the maker centric uh, or maker centered approach to architecture another one is we are following the uh, 6 plus 1 plus 3 when i tell that we are talking about uh, six semesters and then one semester for the internship and then after the internship over we are talking about three semesters or two semesters so uh, it can be uh, 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 the reason why we have done it is uh, it's very important for the students uh, after they've uh, done a certain uh, uh, training or certain uh, learnings which has happened in the first six semesters they go to the uh, professional atmosphere experience it uh, realize what they have learned come back and reflect on their thing in the coming in the left over three semesters and we have uh, introduced something called as uh, the mid semester workshops because we strongly believe in learning in the workshop modes a lot and when i say workshops we are talking about workshop as a physical entity and also workshop as a mode of learning so we call it uh full scale uh i will uh, talk about it in detail uh, a little later we have called it full scale because uh students are going to apply in uh, uh in actuals whatever they've learned and then we have a, a very important uh, uh thing introduced into our uh, system we call it the foundation workshop now foundation workshop uh usually it's just Uh, happens in the first semester but we have taken it uh, and spread it over the first 3 uh, years where uh, we uh, as a school we give a lot of importance to materiality uh, workmanship and uh, tools and uh, their manifestations when we spread it over the 3 years in the first third and the fifth semester we are uh, talking about how uh, right from the uh, Uh, first semester it increases in complexity and goes to the fifth semester and also in the university we follow the uh, cbcs system which is uh, as uh, most of you will be knowing it's a student centric uh, way of learning <clears throat> now i uh, hand over to uh, uh, eq labs for their second question all right uh, megna Okay, guys. The second question is about color theory. Your time starts now, so you need to match the following with the given images here. The options are on the right. First one is split complementary colors. Second one is complementary colors. Then you have neutral colors. Last one is analogous colors.
Okay, so the correct answer is option A. So option A says the first one is of analogous colors. The first one. Uh, then B is complementary. C is split complementary, and D is neutral. Okay, uh, you'll get the detailed explanation at the end of the session. So uh, just to uh, talk about what do we mean by uh, maker-centered, uh, we have uh, uh, taken this uh, from the uh, Harvard School of Education and uh, uh, Agency by Design, because uh, I was fortunate to be part of a, a course about maker-centered learning. Here, we are talking about uh, uh, encompassing uh, the very uh, identity of uh, uh, human identity of being a maker. Now, we've. Uh, uh, I would like to talk about uh, some more attributes of uh, this maker-centered learning. When uh, we talk about a lot of uh, uh, attitude and character building, we talk about uh, being uh, positive to failure. We talk about uh, uh, developing sensitivity. There we talk about uh, risk taking and uh, we talk about uh, uh, just uh, uh, go do it kind of a, uh, attitude where you're not a bystander. You don't uh, wait for people to take action. You are the one who is uh, going to get into the uh, uh, heat of things. Uh, just uh, pull up your sleeves and get into the action. So that's the fundamental uh, approach of uh, the maker-centered learning, where you have your uh, uh, choices and you take action on this, where your intentions are clear, you take choices and then uh, you take action on those uh, choices. Right from uh, the beginning, we have uh, trying to, we have been trying to build upon these things and uh, uh, we are very uh, proud to say that we have uh, kept on uh, learning from what we have done and uh, reached a certain state where we can say that, yes, so this is how we are going to take the next step. Now, as I was always mentioning, some of the things uh, what uh, this uh, maker-centered learning also talks about is to be a systems thinker, to be a collaborative uh, person where... Uh, we are talking about uh, learning from other systems. And one of the very important uh, aspect right from the beginning, we, are, uh, we have been uh, giving importance is about differential uh, learning. When I say differential learning, we ask a simple question as in, why should everybody be a designer? Or why should everyone be a conceptual thinker? Someone has a strength in execution, someone has a strength in detailing, Someone is very good at uh, estimation and costing. Someone is good at business, all within the same profession. So uh, it's a constant effort and a sincere effort we would want to make so that uh, each student who comes to the school, uh, the uh, personality of the student is understood and they are encouraged to work on their strengths. And uh, I feel uh, this is where... Uh, Something are, uh, uh, this is some, one of the primary things what our educational system also uh, needs to uh, catch up where you uh, always uh, talk about one size fits all. Uh, here, somehow we want to uh, make a difference by understanding the uh, different capabilities of students. So uh, DQ Labs, your next question, please. Go ahead, Meghna. Uh, Meghna, if... Yeah, hey, I can yeah. hear you. Okay, guys, the next question. It is a shadow-related question, visual interpretation. The shadow created by the hands in the below position is of a... What shape would it form? So your time starts now. Elephant, teddy bear, rabbit, or a baby?
Okay, so the correct answer is a teddy bear. Okay, it has a. Uh, I think you would have learnt in uh, sketching the perspectives and you know the, the sh shade shadow texture and all this when you learn. So you learn how the shadows fall or what is the formation, right? So the same thing what you would do on a paper is been put up theoretically here. Okay, uh, so yeah, so the answer is yeah. Yes, sir. So I'm done from my end. Thank you. So, uh, in as uh, with uh, any school, the most important aspect is the uh, faculty. Now, uh, I have kind of spaced out a little between the top two lines and the bottom. So, I would just talk about the top uh, two ones because we know that any architecture school has full time and visiting. Now, I'm talking about uh, our faculty being energetic enthusiastic and inspiring. And uh, I can easily say that uh, we are uh, young in the way we uh, approach things. So uh, as a, being a teacher, uh, apart from being energetic and enthusiastic, I feel the most important part is to inspire students. And uh, that is something I believe uh, all my uh, faculty colleagues are uh, uh, good at and uh, we try to uh, keep beating that good and trying to uh, we would like to aspire for uh, a much higher position to inspire students now uh, as i already mentioned that we strongly believe in uh, being uh, uh, multi inter and transdisciplinary uh, this is also an attempt where we are making that uh, most of our uh, uh, the other subjects, what is uh, for the sake of uh, convenience, which has been always been uh, divided in the architectural education, where we uh, address them as silos. We are uh, trying to integrate them into our studios so that the other so called uh, separate subjects can be. Uh, evaluated as part of the uh, studios and uh, we also want to uh, bring in uh, professionals from uh, different fields to be part of these studios so this is a uh, uh, we are uh, trying to do it and uh, very soon uh, we should uh, start those attempts so let us see how uh, things go and talking about uh, infrastructure, of course, we have all the uh, infrastructure what uh, is needed for the School of Architecture. But uh, I have just highlighted uh, uh, two uh, parts here. One is the workshop and the other one is the maker space. I will be uh, talking about how uh, these things uh, come into uh, picture and why uh, we have uh, 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 given importance to these spaces because uh, when we talk that we are a maker-centered uh, school, uh, these become uh, very critical aspects where uh, uh, these are the places where your uh, uh, thinking can continue happening. We don't believe that you should follow a certain uh, a fixed uh, process there you where you start from a sketch and that becomes something else and then uh, you get on to more detailed drawings and then you uh, do models as a sake of, as a mode of presentation. We believe that your design uh, your, or your solutions can happen and uh, uh, arrive at uh, any point of time. So our makerspace and the workshop uh, is also one such space where you can arrive at your uh, uh, solutions what you are what you have uh, framed and what you have defined so uh, how is the what are the different uh, courses of study in the school and uh, though you are aware that uh, most of them are uh, standard uh, courses as a private university and a school we have given importance to uh, certain things uh, in our school the uh, foundation uh, 
studies is a very uh, crucial and very critical uh, aspect of the whole thing one is because that's where uh, your transition is happening from uh, your plus 2 mode to a, a professional education mode and that to a studio based professional education now in the uh, foundation studies uh, we have uh, attempted where we integrate uh, the architectural design the uh, uh, basic design and visual arts into the thing so this is an ongoing uh, learning for us where we are trying how to integrate uh, this thing and uh, do it it's just last year we've started to uh, integrate this thing and uh, it's a continuous process where uh, we need to keep relooking it then we have uh, uh, history of architecture and of course the uh, one of the core uh, uh, subject building construction and materials where uh, as uh, all of you are already aware the architectural design studio is the uh, core of the entire uh, br program which culminates in the uh, thesis which we have in the 10th semester now as i already mentioned uh, there are two more things which uh, act as major enablers for the architectural design studio that is the foundation workshops which happen at the Uh, first semester third semester and fifth semester wherein we are talking about uh, materiality where we are talking about uh, real materials and real tools uh, we don't believe as a school we don't believe that the architect uh, uh, unlike in the conventional center doesn't uh, end at just visualizing we are talking about taking it a step further where our uh, students should be capable of taking it to the uh field where uh, they can uh, uh, they are equally capable of executing things okay and uh, full scale is another uh, uh, important thing where they uh, uh, apply uh, things in the uh, field and learn from it and get back to the studio so it's a to and fro uh, motion and then uh, we are talking about Uh, computer applications now because it's part of the structure and uh, it is uh, one of the uh, prescribed things we have it but what uh, in our school we have done is that we've uh, tried to not look at this uh, thing as a separate entity at all uh, and i believe we don't have an option to look at it as a separate entity uh, right from day one we uh, want our students to be uh, conversant with Uh, any form of technology and uh, that is something we have uh, incorporated right from the beginning so the uh, question from dq labs yeah so the next question is which one of the option are simple rotation of the given figure <coughs> Okay, this is a given figure. You need to find out which is which correct option gives you the rotation of this one. Okay, time starts now. Yeah, the core of this question is your spatial relationships and visualization. Okay, so this is a so there are. about 12 new topics that are going to be covered uh, that are going to come in and under these 12 topics there's multiple uh, types of questions okay but these 12 topics are core and then there'll be multiple sub topics so pay attention to the topic from where the question is coming yeah for this the correct answer is option a i'll tell you why it is see just see this image the given figure like uh, the sim the image one and see the colors okay see the colors and see the uh, options in this case what happens here is you need to do it by elimination okay so in this case just see this red color you have three red colors over here okay in the first option you have three red colors fine but when it comes to second option three red colors are adjacent to each other but when it comes to your main object 
So it's not there. So you can eliminate this. So when it comes to here, three red colors are there and you have more than one yellow color here. So you see you have six yellow colors here, but in this case you have more than six. So you can eliminate this one also. And in this case, see, you have four red colors. So we can eliminate by using the colors. Meena, Meena are you watching the question which is uh, uh, live on the on the YouTube on the Zoom link? Oh, sorry, I don't sorry. see I don't see colors here. Sorry, 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 Dion. One second, one second. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So here, here, this one, the shapes. So you, the, when the object is given, you need to cut the, the pieces, the pieces, whatever the pieces are given, you need to take the pieces and you need to match them up over here, which shape will give you this thing. So in this case, what happens here is the fourth option, whatever it's given, that's the correct answer. Because this is, this won't happen with this pieces. So one extra piece is there over here. So that's the reason. Okay. I'm sorry. I think. Can I continue? Yes. yes. So, so for the detailed explanation of that, we can uh, discuss it after this webinar. Yeah, after this webinar. Thank you. Now, I will just run you through some of the uh, images to show you the uh, full scale workshops what uh, we write from the uh, beginning. Uh, recently concluded one where uh, we did our uh, eighth full scale. Now, I'm not uh, talking or showing. Uh, that is something where every uh, architecture school will uh, try to emphasize. Uh, so we are try, uh, try, just trying to uh, talk about the uh, uh, core differentiator. So uh, I will just run you. Most of them are self-explanatory and uh, wherever I have to uh, intervene, I will be uh, just highlighting. Now, uh, this is from our uh, students of the first batch. Uh, this was in uh, 2015, where it was uh, constrained where they had to use corrugated sheet and triangles. So they had to uh, come up with uh, uh, some kind of a, a developments here, considering the rigidity and the flexibility of the uh, what the triangle offers. And this was also part of the uh, foundation where uh, they had to think through wire as a material and then they had to start from uh, uh, nature as an inspiration where dried leaves were taken and the form was explored. This talks about uh, specifically where uh, the uh, student gets sensitized to uh, one tool and one material. So if you see with, a, with just with a wire and one tool, it's a plier, how detailed you can get um and then I mean, got, uh, each student had to repeat a certain but then suddenly they realized uh, repetition also has a lot of sorry something you told me yeah yeah i'm uh, I th i'm thinking your bandwidth is a little slow i i don't know whether it's on so my then, side or uh, your side we are uh, in the okay uh, yeah so should i go slow maybe maybe uh, if you can switch your webcam off for now it may be better and then you can open it up during the Q&A session. Okay. Yeah. I've uh, done it. Maybe I'll just go a little slow and... Uh, uh, so uh, this is one of the very uh, uh, unique things what uh, students do in our school is about uh, systems thinking. <coughs> Uh, 
these were all part of the uh, foundation workshop I think we've lost your uh, voice again. So I'll just browse through the uh, images. So nothing, they're all self explanatory. Is it better now, dear? Yes, yes, it's fine. Yeah, uh, the uh, question by uh, DQ Labs, please. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys. This is the next question. This is a kind of puzzle question, okay? So the question is, which one of the options are simple rotation of the given figure? This is a given figure. And these are the options. Okay? So this you can do only by elimination. This you can do only by elimination. So just see the figure first. And analyze how many red are there and how many yellow are there and how many brown and how many are light colors. Okay. Based on that and see the rotation I also. Think, I think uh, yeah, Meena, let, let's give them some time to uh, submit their answers. Yes, sir. So 30 seconds to submit your answer. Yeah, guys. So the correct answer for this is option A. Okay. So the detailed explanation of this so will be given at the end of the session. Okay. Yeah, sir. Thank, you can do. Thanks, Meena. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, I would like to uh, talk a little more about our uh, workshops, the full scale workshop. This is uh, one time of uh, one week uh, in between the semester where uh, students across the semester get together and work on projects. Now, uh, this was the first uh, uh, full scale what we did where uh, they were working uh, based on a constraint of a material. They were working with strips of uh, bamboo, about six meter length strips. And over a uh, it was the first time we were attempting uh, this workshop and uh, there was uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, learnings from it where uh, uh, there was no limitations or uh, there were very little constraints in terms of uh, uh, materials and all those things. So we have come a long way. So I will just take you through that uh, journey, how we went about. I will just tell you that this is the first, this is the second and what was the basic the highlights of it. So these are the outputs of the first workshop. So what this workshop is uh, shown a lot is that otherwise students uh, who are very uh, reserved or whose uh, real talents don't come out is that those talents really show up here and uh, uh, people with a lot of leadership qualities come out, people who can collaborate with others, people who negotiate with uh, others. In this particular uh, group, when students had, uh, uh, had to go and find out certain materials, they went, found out, negotiated the price of the thing and uh, uh, finished. completed the uh, job. Now, this was our second workshop where uh, 
it was uh, just one uh, uh, cube of uh, bamboo which was to be uh, uh, just replicated uh, by uh, each student and uh, it was uh, to become an installation. Four different techniques were uh, being tried out by the students. So during the workshop, the entire school has an atmosphere like this. And this was our uh, fourth workshop where uh, the uh, theme was about tensile structures. So in a week, students had put up uh, 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 these structures uh, first. Uh, the, uh, we had uh, called uh, architect uh, Dhyan Belliapa as one of our uh, uh, resource persons who uh, was uh, working with our faculty and students and uh, pretty interesting forms came out during that uh, week. So this was uh, part of our uh, uh, fifth workshop where it was a combination of uh, things. Where again, uh, part of the workshop, a group of uh, students worked on this uh, structure, which is a five meter tall uh, structure, which has a one meter dia oculus or an opening in the top. And here uh, we had uh, involved uh, about eight students from the civil engineering department also. Uh, the CMRU School of Architecture is uh, part of the CMRIT uh, campus, which is a uh, uh, engineering uh, college. So this was the uh, structure which got completed not during the workshop, but a month later. But again, uh, students uh, took part in uh, all the uh, finishing all the murals and things on the thing. Simple things were learned uh, during this workshop and during uh, <coughs> doing structures like this. Importance of what is a uh, importance of say a scaffolding. Why uh, scaffolding is important uh, more than just your uh, design. What you do on your uh, drawing sheet, the scaffolding never comes into picture. But when you have to execute it how important that one small thing becomes. So here, the other things what parallelly happened were uh, we had a parametric uh, workshop uh, happening on one side and a very unique thing uh, what uh, happened was we had involved uh, uh, traditional craftsmen. Uh, to the right, you see uh, uh, the artist uh, Pijush Mondal from Shantini Ketan and uh, uh, the school, apart from when I said we have a bias towards sustainability, we also have a bias towards uh, uh, appreciating and applying uh, traditional uh, uh, crafts and uh, knowledge. So this was part of the thing where students took part in uh, doing uh, Dokra casting in brass. And then there was a uh, thing where they had to, uh, uh, as part of the same workshop, they had to uh, design and prototype a bench. So different materials and approach were uh, tried by different students to come up with prototypes. Part of the same workshop, one of our uh, faculty who specializes in uh, woodcut prints, uh, Atri, uh, he conducted a, a printmaking workshop. So. You see, these were the final prints and uh, uh, here is where you see the woodcuts, which now have become uh, murals all over the uh, school. So I will uh, come to the uh, uh, latest one, which we uh, 
uh, did uh, two months back, this was a very challenging uh, workshop to do for us because of the pandemic, where uh, otherwise in the school we had to uh, get together with 200, uh, 250 plus students and so much activity used to be there. It was so much hands-on, one-on-one, and this was a complete antithesis for that thing. So we had to do the uh, hands-on workshop uh, offline, uh, online, sorry. So uh, this was uh, uh, conducted uh, by myself and my colleague, uh, architect Akshara Varma. So uh, this was uh, where uh, we had uh, given the uh, theme there where each uh, uh, group, which was uh, the entire school was divided into uh, groups of 16 students. They had to uh, come up with a pod considering uh, what that pod will do. They had to define it and they had to uh, come up with a pod. So uh, these uh, squares, what you see were, were uh, denoting groups and uh, they were based on colors. So at the end of one week, it was a process oriented one. We were not really uh, so much uh, concentrating on what product comes out, but it's so much of a process oriented one. Uh, and uh, it's also a way, of, a way for students to figure out how to uh, work in such a situation. So if there are 16 people in a group, all 16 belong to right from first year to the fourth year. So they had to, uh, someone had to uh, coordinate, someone had to take the role, leadership roles. They had to discuss, convince each other about their uh, ideas and what will be taken forward. And the end uh, output, we had uh, mentioned that it should be a three minute video. So in the online mode, they had to figure out what are the tools they're going to use. And uh, uh, quite a few of them, went on to uh, even uh, try and adapt uh, uh, professional tools like uh, Adobe Premiere they tried out. And this is where we feel where we challenge ourselves, we challenge the students to uh, take up uh, things which are otherwise uh, like uh, deemed to not happen. So, and uh, at the end of it, we had a... Uh, uh, webinar where they each one of them uh, we presented their uh, movies. It was an amazing learning experience both for us as faculty and as uh, uh, students. Like these are the kind of outputs which uh, came out of the workshop. I'm just putting the uh, uh, themes of uh, those things which came out but uh, you can uh, check out in uh, Instagram. It's called Full Scale One Zero Seven. Uh, they have uh, we have uh, put up all their uh, works, including the uh, uh, videos what they had done as the final output. And uh, this was the uh, uh, virtual film premiere which we had at the end of the uh, workshop, uh, which uh, uh, in between we had uh, called in some of our uh, uh, friends to give inputs to the thing as complete outsiders. It was a totally different uh, learning platform. And uh, what we are doing is from here, we are taking it to the uh, coming semester, which uh, for the senior batches, which we are starting on the August uh, 3rd, uh, learnings from uh, these kind of things into our uh, teaching learning process now. Now, as I already mentioned, uh, one of our uh, important uh, uh, assets in the school is the makerspace. This was started in uh, 2016 where uh, we have uh, put in various tools where uh, students can access it and uh, work on their uh, presentations or uh, it's up to you how you uh, use the facilities. We have two 3D printers and one laser cutter and uh, CNC router and a host of other uh, and tools and materials which students can uh, directly procure from the makerspace. So I would like to end uh, this presentation by uh, 
showing uh, two small videos which have been uh, made by our uh, uh, faculty uh, atri chetan and uh, prachi sahasrabuddhe uh, akshaya lakshmi narsimhan uh, uh, sneha shridhar and uh, hanna florence so uh, these uh, two small uh, videos and then uh, we can uh, uh, open for uh, question answers Sir, uh, we're not able to hear any sound. Um, could you unplug your uh, maybe headset or speakers if uh, you have that? Should I unplug it? Yes, just unplug it and then we'll see. Concepts. Yeah, now, now it can be heard. You will analyze, understand, and make Are you able to hear now? You will learn to reflect. And yes, can be heard. Create in your mind and on paper. And eventually, in the real world. We also believe that failure is important in the learning process. And we can find great ideas in our field of study. You have what it takes to be an architecture student. Apart from being creative, you need to be hardworking and consistent and manage your time well. Heatless nights are part and parcel of any design education. Don't worry, your classmates and faculty are fellow night owls. When you stay up, our classrooms, which we call studios, are open 24 7. You can work on your projects and collaborate with peers, learning how to work within a group, respecting different opinions. Encouraging skill sharing and striving towards a common goal are crucial for a positive studio culture. In the five years of the program, you will go on multiple excursions and site visits. These trips are mandatory as they expose you to histories, cultures, and building techniques prevalent both within and outside the country. Within the campus, you can be part of many extracurricular activities and celebrations. We embrace our diversity and we believe in forming a strong community of students, alumni, and faculty. We are open for admissions. Our new semester begins in August 2020. Hello, CMRU School of Architecture is here again to talk about our architecture program and its structure. If you'd like to know more about life at our campus, please check out our first video. The Bachelor's of Architecture program consists of many courses. Building Construction and Materials, History and Theory of Architecture, Visual Arts, Workshop, Building Services and Structures. All these branches tie back to the trunk or the core subject, which is Architectural Design. Architectural Design Studio lies at the heart of the VR program. This course exposes you to architectural languages and design processes, which you will use to form your own design. This course increases in complexity across
across the five years, from designing an individual house to institutions, and eventually the program culminated in a self in construction and materials. You will learn about traditional and modern building techniques and the construction methods behind these structural systems. The theory behind these systems is understood and analyzed in the structural space. In history of architecture, you will study examples of architecture from prehistoric and early civilizations to contemporary works in the 21st century. You will be analyzing artistic and architectural styles and principles in subjects such as theory of architecture and article solution. At our school, there are a range of electives you will be exposed to. Music, drama, creative writing, painting, abstract diagramming, and animation are just a few examples of the kinds of electives that we offer. Foundation, workshop, and full school are two courses that align directly with our maker-centric ideology. While foundation workshop is a weekly studio, full scale is a five-day long workshop taking place every semester giving you the opportunity to work with and learn from your seniors and juniors. These workshops set CMRU School of Architecture apart from other schools. If you'd like to know more about our school, tune in to our interactive webinar on the 10th and 13th of July. Details are available on our social media. Thank you, Dion. This that's the thing. So, I, are there any questions uh, we can take up? Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. Now we can put our cams on. Right. So, uh, a lot of questions regarding the admission process. Um, hold on. So, let me just go from the top. So, uh, so one of the few things that I'd actually like to uh, discuss with you, which has not been asked, which is interesting. Now, you said with your workshops and your activities, um, you have a lot of collaboration and negotiation that happens, right? You, you expose the students to collaboration and negotiation. Why is that important? Uh, it's a very simple uh, reason, uh, Dion. When you go to the profession, you never work alone. And you never work alone, and you have to uh, collaborate with many different uh, professions. And uh, so, sooner you realize it and learn about it, the better it is. Than uh, thinking for five years uh, that uh, yeah, that you are at the top of the pyramid, and then you suddenly go and realize that no, you are just another uh, piece in the whole system, and you need to understand that. Uh, you have to be part of the system and uh, you have to work as a team always yeah absolutely i think i think uh, one of the things that we've seen architects doing they have to talk with everyone right from politicians to uh, lawmakers to to laborers on the site isn't it and you have to uh, understand and try to speak each one's language that is when they will feel comfortable. It's not about everyone understanding and learning your language. When I say language, it's about how you communicate. So uh, I can just give you a small example. One of our students uh, had gone to do his uh, training in Ahmedabad and he came back and his biggest insight was that all the drawings in their office, which used to go to the site were uh, made in Gujarati. Because the people at site, they were uh, not used to understanding the standard uh, English, what we use in the drawings. Because it's never taught to us in the school that, yes, finally things have to be executed at site. And mm. the person who's executing has to understand what you're trying to communicate. It was such a simple thing, but it's such a profound learning. And uh, this is where our uh, shifting the uh, internship uh, to the seventh semester has brought in a lot of uh, such learnings to the students. And I'm very confident that when they go out, uh, they are uh, going to be more confident about handling things. All right. And uh, also one, one aspect which I think, uh, you know, I should have mentioned when introducing you is I think uh, 
your concept of the maker space, you know, is something that we see generally in design schools, uh, not so much in architecture schools, but I think that's a brilliant concept that you'll have there. Um, and I think this has something to do with your IIT uh, Bombay background as well, your design background, apart from your architecture background. I can uh, uh, partly say partly true uh, because uh, the when uh, the uh, uh, management uh, wanted uh, me to uh, check out what is it that uh, we need to, if we have to set up an architecture school, what is it that is going to set us apart? Immediately my background as a, uh, I always call myself as a designer craftsman because I believe that uh, whatever I'm designing, I have to be able to somewhere execute it. So that craftsman is always tagged along with me. So I, if I say that is not an influence, then I'll be telling a lie. But it was a, it was a big influence. And also uh, uh, taking it further, I don't see uh, uh, coming forward it, and it's already like that. There is no such distinction that the architect's role ends here or someone else's role begins. We need to be, that is where is our new capabilities, what uh, we have to build. The boundaries are uh, very, very uh, slim. And the sooner you accept it, the better you, you will be. So there's no second thought about it. All right, fantastic. So there's a lot of questions regarding the admission process. Um, so, so what is the process? How many seats are allocated to what uh, level? And there are students from within Bangalore, within Karnataka, outside Karnataka. Uh, so if you could just cover the admission process for all of these categories, that would be great. Uh, uh, just to make it in a very simple way to tell, uh, one is uh, we have an intake of uh, 80 seats. Out of that, 40% uh, or 32 seats go to the uh, government of Karnataka. And uh, we have uh, uh, about uh, 12 seats what go to the comment case stream and uh, rest of them are uh, the management seats. So, uh, uh, so the, anyone interested, uh, uh, we have uh, no say in the uh, uh, CET seats and the comment case seats. Anyone who's interested can directly get in touch with uh, me or uh, the admission uh, numbers which is there on our website for the management seats and uh, we uh, whichever stream happens we want the best students to come to our school and across the five years we have uh, 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 facilitated everything possible to bring in the best students to our school whichever stream and i uh, very specifically mentioned it to the students the moment the admission process is over, it doesn't matter which stream they came from. They're all students of the school on the same platform. All right. And do you all have any requirement um, for the management seats? Do you all have a requirement of a portfolio or anything with, for these students or they could just apply directly? Uh, uh, that's a very good uh, uh, question, Dion. Till uh, uh, last year, uh, I used to specifically have uh, an exam how uh, IITs have where there is a small written component to the thing and then there was a interview and then they had to submit a portfolio so that even in the management seat I can uh, see what best can be done to accommodate the uh, best students and a portfolio always speaks a lot uh, but uh, it has to be accompanied with a personal interview and uh, some written component where uh, their skills can be immediately tested. I believe in that because uh, when uh, that's the beauty of the uh, uh, IIT systems where uh, they are not just looking at your uh, marks per se. They are looking at uh, different uh, other skills where uh, you could get into the uh, design stream. I have to be that way uh, really I have to acknowledge the uh, systems what we have, at least in the IITs. That way. I'm sure Umesh and Sean, uh, Sean will vouch for it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So um, there are some questions. Where is this college located? It's in Bangalore. 
uh, are there girls in this college of course there are um so there is there's no you know specification that there are no girls there has to be girls uh, and it's 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 a very good mixed environment i'm sure um what is the board criteria and the cutoffs that you all uh, that generally happen uh, to get into your school uh so uh, see uh, in the uh, cet uh, rankings uh, we have uh, always been in the 10 top uh, 10 uh, colleges in the uh, state it's a fluctuating thing to tell what is the cut off as such uh, so that's a, a difficult question considering the uh, theme what is going on during this period of time is uh, uh, the theme is uncertainty so we have really no clue as to uh, where these standings are going to uh, happen uh, that's something which we need to uh, wait and watch uh, usually uh, like say if we say cbse uh, i think uh, in the merit uh, stream when uh, in our school it's about 80 to 85% uh, was the kind of uh, thing but it also matters how much did they score in nata and uh this thing so it's very uh, difficult exactly to tell so if you have um, uh, you know uh, some kind of a guideline say last year ct at what rank they got through last year's not uh, comet k what rank they could expect uh see last year comet k our uh, cut off was 600 was that the first round or uh, the first second? round the first round first, first round. round okay yeah so All we right. still got uh, uh about uh, three or four admissions in the uh second round because some of them had not taken it up and things which right. usually happens yeah. yeah uh so just so everyone knows if you're not from karnataka uh you could either apply through comet k or you could apply directly through the management uh seat um if you have a rank which is less than 600 then then that's that's the rank you should be targeting all right and for um, students in karnataka um, what was the first round cut off sir uh, first round cut off was somewhere uh, 250 uh, kind of a thing right so so all of you all need to kind of evaluate you'll see if you'll have a rank of the possibility of getting a rank less than 250 then you'll have a good chance of getting into the school all right yeah. um right so going forward do the faculty have industry experience uh, uh, a question by diksha bandari uh, this is a very important uh, question which is uh, asked by uh, diksha uh, personally we have always uh, believed that uh, uh, any uh, design teacher should uh, follow what the uh, uh, medical schools follow each teacher is a practitioner and one way or the other they have to be involved with practice or with uh, research if they have to uh, become a design uh, teacher or an architecture teacher uh, we do insist that at least two to three years you should have uh, experience in the thing but also uh, what uh, we have found out that some people are thoroughly academically oriented and we uh, uh scrutinize it uh, in a thorough manner so uh, that's a standard rule what we have uh, to take faculty to our school and uh, i'm really proud about uh, that that the kind of faculty we have uh, uh, have always uh, uh, stood up to that scrutiny all right um question from from uh, jyoti shekhar and also ms uh, raja lakshmi um do you have a placement cell what kind of uh, placements happen and do you have foreign exchange programs for uh, with the university foreign university exchange program uh two questions uh one uh in uh, architecture uh, there is uh as of now i have not come across a concept of having a placement cell as such 
but uh, what uh, we do is during the uh, uh, reviews uh, we try to get in the uh, best of the best to be part of the review panels and uh, in, even in our uh, board of studies we have the uh, top in the profession so they are all aware of the kind of works what uh, students are doing especially for the theses uh, the kind of uh, Uh, examiners we had called they're all uh, some of the top uh, uh, practicing professionals so immediately the word goes around as to what kind of output is coming out from the uh, school so i feel in a profession like ours uh, it can't be a better platform uh, than that but as a university uh, we are planning to uh, have uh, at least if not for this batch for the coming batch we are uh, planning to have uh, some dedicated exhibitions of the student works uh, the final year works so that uh, we can uh, bring in the right people to that uh, uh, platform and connect the students and the uh, industry and uh, the second question right. uh, as of now we don't have any collaborations uh, with but as a school we are trying because we've just completed our uh, our first batch has just gone out yeah so uh, just to build up on that most architecture schools will not have a placement cell because the um, you know i think the platform that schools give is very interesting they the they are they are uh, facilitators of learning and they they are facilitators of getting a lot of visiting faculties visiting uh, professionals uh, both indian and global and 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 students need to capitalize on that number one number two i think the opportunities that are, are coming in are going getting really varied so um, we're seeing students getting into the video game industry architecture students getting into the video game industry and you know various uh, aspects and also doing the master so there are tremendous options that follow uh, but it is typically up to a student to to uh, take the initiative to get into a job of their own um quite a few questions on the uh, oh, oh one more thing as uh, as far as the foreign collaborations are concerned i think uh, there's not another issue with the the indian degree not being recognized uh, by uh, you know foreign foreign companies like the, the 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 coa of india the council of architecture of india does not mm -hmm. accept the uh, you know the degrees of other nations some other nations so okay. uh, inversely there's there's degrees are not valid here so there is some complication to get that uh, uh, foreign I think I lost you, dear. Maybe a problem with my connection. Yes, I think. Uh, so, is there an issue with the uh, collaboration, the foreign collaboration, meaning the COA does not accept the degrees of uh, foreign architects? So, so uh, those foreign bodies. So they accept the Indian architecture degrees. So, is there some kind of complication of that? Uh, just to clarify, uh, when I say we are a, a private university, uh, it is uh, completely following the uh, state government, the COA, the UGC, and uh, all the other statutory bodies. Uh, whatever has to be followed. Uh, it has it has followed. That's when we get to be called as a private university. I uh, don't think there is any such uh, uh, thing which is not recognized as such because we have not faced anything like that. And as I said, uh, we have not had any of our students taking admissions abroad because this is our first batch which is gone. For sure, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, every which way. Uh, uh, following all the norms of the ugc and uh, you can check in the ugc website about the uh, university so that's the clearest possible uh, answer 
we can give for that all all right i was i was referring to uh, you know at a government policy level mm -hmm. the council of architecture itself does not say for example if there's an architect in the uk mm -hmm. uh, who wants to practice in india yeah the government does not recognize his degree uh, it is not the degree but uh, his license as an architect yes his license yeah the so council of architecture yeah. uh, also uh, very clearly specifies that as a university if you want to take uh, some uh, student a foreign student who has not come through the uh, taken up the nata entrance uh, they clearly tell that it is between the university and the uh, student but council will not give a uh, registration uh, number council will not recognize that student as an architect in india all right all right so yeah so i guess that's the problem with foreign collaborations uh, that would be a impediment for for uh, your school tying up with another school abroad uh, that again uh, it's not uh, that way dion when we say foreign collaborations it is always about exchange programs okay bit about exchange program and usually exchange programs happen in terms of semesters they are not going to offer a bark degree to our student so our student and their uh, students can happen as an exchange program all right all right fantastic okay so the the next question is on the uh uh is on the the fee structure at cmr mm -hmm. what is the fee structure whether it's cet or comment k or the management seat uh see uh i'll come in the reverse management uh, fees uh it's uh, best if uh, they get in touch with me uh directly because what happens is depending on uh, their uh, uh, pu score or the uh, 12th score and their uh, other rankings uh, there is a certain uh, fee structure the management is fixed and uh, then based on their things uh, uh, we finalize what kind of a, a concession can be given to the student based on the merit what uh, they have and uh, Uh, the comet k fees uh, last year it was about 2.3 uh, uh, lakhs plus and uh, uh, the uh, uh, cet fees including the college fees comes up to around 90000 plus all right all right um so now are your classes going online for the senior stu students and would it be online for this group of students uh as of now for the fresh batch of students as in when the government uh, orders uh, come in we are going to strictly follow that but for our senior batches we are going to start the classes from august 3rd and they are they are going to be online all right because when uh, coming to the uh, safety of the students we don't want to uh, take any chances in that way because there are quite a few students who are outside the state and they all come in and they have to settle down and uh, things we don't want to take those chances nor uh, wait for a definite uh, settle down happen so that we don't want their classes to uh, suffer as such right uh so diksha bandari is asking is there a college bus facility from all across in uh, you know bangalore uh, uh there are a few routes uh, in the uh, thing which comes to Uh, acs layout that is the white field area because uh, the uh, campus used to run about 8 uh, to 10 routes few years back but after the volvo bus services there is a bus stop right in front of the uh, campus so uh, we had to stop lot of those uh, routes now there are only uh, two routes which are going one comes from indranagar side and the other one comes from uh, bl layout the hebal those are the two routes which are uh, running as of well. now all right all right uh so uh, the final question is regarding the hostel facilities what hostel facilities are offered or what are the options we have uh, hostel facilities usually are offered uh, for students uh, first preference is given for students outside the uh, city and outside the state if and when uh, they are available it's uh, give going to be given to the local students we usually usually discourage uh, uh, 
local students taking up hostels. All right, all right. So cool. Um, now, just just uh, final things. There are uh, multiple questions being asked here regarding the campus recruitment. I think uh, multiple people are asking this. I think we covered this earlier. Yeah. So it's just the one batch that has graduated. Um, would you like to throw some light on the uh, recruitment process or? or uh, it's when so many people are uh, asking, I will uh, take this as a feedback and we will work out a, a, a plan of action for this as to how we can address this uh, recruitment uh, thing as a, it's a new thing for an architecture school. So let me be very frank about it because uh, I have at least never come across a recruitment cell for an architecture school. So uh, uh, this is something I'll take it as a feedback and uh, we will uh, work out something for it. Yeah. So so uh, just to add a little more clarity on that, generally in an architecture school, uh, the, the, the recruitment process is, there's no such thing. So, so you can't compare an architecture school with an engineering school. All right. Yes. So we're used to comparing, okay, Infosys is coming and taking 100 students. Wipro is coming and taking another 100 students. That does not happen in an architecture school. Uh, in an architecture school, what happens is that every student has a unique ability and a unique uh, sense of design and, and, and unique aspiration. Sure. So a lot of the students search for their you know specific company that they want to get into. So in such a manner that even if a large company comes, they will not want to sit for those placements. Sure. All right say right. there are placements. So uh, there's different ways of looking at it, but for sure we cannot look at it the way we look at engineering placements, all right? Perfect, um, perfect. Yes, uh, so that's that. Uh, so since that question was being asked multiple times, I, I said, let me uh, go through that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Then there are a few questions regarding the bus pickup facility and all that. Uh, I think Diksha, uh, probably some of these questions could be uh, directed towards uh, directly with the college. Um, ha, there's a good question here from Diksha. Is there a direct admission entrance test? I saw that there were three dates on the CMR architecture website for this. Is this for management seat only? Uh, this is for the... Uh... Uh, engineering and other schools because for the architecture school we cannot conduct any entrance tests at such because the qualifying mark will always be your plus two and your uh, nata and uh, je entrance so uh, beyond that if for management seats we go by the portfolio and their uh, uh, plus two marks and the things so the uh, the entrance test what she must be talking about is the uh, one for the engineering uh, school. Okay. Uh, right. So questions. Uh, last uh, question. I think uh, I've been saying last question, but there are more coming in. So um, one question by PS4 Gamer. All right. Uh, should we write the Comet K exam to get into this college? The answer is no. You need to apply to Comet K but you do not need to write the exam. Comet K has a separate application only for architecture, specifically for architecture. That's what you need to apply to. Uh, Diksha Bandari has one more question, which I've, I'm going to modify the question. Uh, what level CM, is CMR at when compared to uh, other institutes? Now I'm, going to, uh, now, I'm not going to put it that way. Rather, I'm going to say, how would CMR compare compare themselves with any other institute in uh, Bangalore? Why would they be better? That's a uh, good question. And uh, it's also a uh, uh, difficult question to uh, straight away uh, answer it in so uh, clear terms. Uh, see, for us, uh, we uh, have to uh, always compete against ourselves. That's the simplest way I can put because we are a private university and uh, there is a lot of people think that you're a private university, you can do anything. So that is where the uh, difficulty comes for us that 
yes we are a private university but we always have to beat our own benchmarks and uh, that way uh, uh, my presentation should answer that question basically how how we are different now uh, it's a constant thing that till now we have reached there and uh, we are going to beat that and keep uh, going up ahead yeah so i think uh, just to add to that i think uh, for us for the new school for the new schools in karnataka um what i've noticed is that uh, within the last 4 years you'll have you know you'll have really come up to within the top 10 in karnataka considering that there are so many schools you know yeah. um so i think i think that is a testimony uh, of the quality and and the aspirations that you'll have created for people to join your school precisely so yeah. that's a simpler way to uh, put it but we will uh, keep doing what we have to do and uh, uh nowhere along the line we are going to compromise on certain things right brilliant i think that's i, I think one of the best way uh, ways you could put it is when you said we have to compete amongst us by yeah. ourselves with ourselves i think that's the best way you could have put it uh so if someone wants to get in touch with you directly yeah. Yeah. um can i share your mobile number or is there a specific number you'd like to share Uh, if they go to the website, one is uh, the you get the admission thing. They can ask for me. They can ask for me, and you can always share my uh, mobile number. But I don't know how you're going to share it. So that's uh, why I, I'm sharing it on the chat option on YouTube. There's a chat option where the questions are coming in. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can. Uh, otherwise, I can uh, share uh, uh, a number on the chat for you so that you can. Uh, yes. Uh, the- that would work as well right so um i hope you all like this thing this uh, particular webinar please click on the like button for one and number 2 uh, please also share uh, subscribe to this youtube channel the dq labs youtube channel follow us on facebook follow us on instagram um you know uh, we are doing a lot more of these activities every day a new school is coming up and just to summarize uh just one second i'm going to be sharing the uh okay so i've just shared the phone number of miss mrs uh, miss revathi please contact mrs revathi for any admission related uh, inquiries um yeah so so just to kind of conclude the session uh today what you'll have gone through is is the unique features of cmr university school of architectures the school the faculty the philosophy of the head of the institute which is professor uh, murli the ready the general scores that you need to get into this uh, school there have been five new questions that you can expect in line with the nata 2020 new pattern um there are 501 new questions being added go to our website edge.dqlabs.in look out for the course this is this is a separate course called nata 2020 new pattern so please go to that there'll be 50 questions added per day from august 1st onwards um till we reach this 501 and uh, every day after that after the first day from day 2 onwards we're going to have 20 sessions explaining those those uh, uh, those 501 questions for 45 minutes a day this is going to cost you 4000 rupees for all all these 501 questions and, and the explanations um the dq lab students get this included in their entire course it is those who are not full time students of dq labs they would have to enroll for this separately all right so you can find the details on the website uh, right so thank you so much all right um, so on next monday we are having another uh, presentation next week talking about the the next steps to architecture uh, that means once you answer your nata exam then what happens what is the process what is the nata 
uh, exams how do you submit your scores how do you upload your scores so look out for that please uh, keep watching our channel every day and we're going to uh, be discussing that uh, uh, mrs mrs uh, revathi is not from dq labs mrs revathi miss revathi is from cm mar university school of architecture directly all right uh, professor murlidhar uh, there's one question here is what is the college timings uh, college timing if you could work, answer that ha uh, we work from 8 to 4 all right all right okay then uh, thank you so much for taking the time out professor murlidhar it, it was a pleasure having you over same here dion and thanks looking a lot. forward to uh, a lot of the students considering your school thank you thanks, thanks.